We're now at part five of this YouTube series, where I'm gonna show you how to create your own Steam VR camera rig, complete with play area wireframes and motion controllers. This will help you understand how the Steam VR camera rig works, and will especially help those of you who are converting an existing game to the Vive. As always, go over to learn.vrdev.school and enroll in the free Vive developer mini course to get the latest version of this lesson. So you probably wanna know more about what magic just happened with that Steam VR camera prefab. And you might have guessed that you can just rebuild that prefab based on an existing camera by copying over some of the components and having a look in there. And if you guess that, then uh, you are one clever velociraptor, or perhaps a wise old velociraptor. Anyway, so you're right. The, the thing what we can do is uh, we can rebuild that prefab by looking at its components. Uh, if you have an existing game, an existing camera, you're going to want to build that yourself, and you're going to want to build out a Steam VR camera, and you might not be able to use that prefab. So let's jump in there and do that. The first thing we'll do is we'll disable that Steam camera rig. There we go. And then we'll re-enable the main camera that we had before. So we'll click here to re-enable the game object. And we're going to re want to reset its transform position. So it's at Y1, 10, negative, uh, negative Z. And so just click up in the gear icon and go reset. Or what you can do is just enter it manually, 0, 0, 0, and then 1, 1, 1 for the scale. And that'll put it back in the middle, and that should be the center. We're going to think of that as the center of our tracking volume when we're building our game. So just leave it all at zero. We don't want to offset everything. We're going to build our objects around the camera, and then let Steam VR take care of the positioning of the player within that tracking volume. Okay, so the first step here is just note that you've got your flare layer, GUI layer, and audio listener on this main camera. It's tagged as the main camera. And what we want to do is add a component. We want to add is the, as you see right here, the Steam VR camera. So just type Steam VR camera. You'll get that script there. And then you get these two script components that get added when you do that. You get the Steam VR camera script and this Steam VR camera flip script. Now click on expand on the Steam VR camera script. And then what you're going to see is that we had one object before, the main camera, and now it's been renamed. And now there are actually four objects. Okay, so you've got your main camera origin, head, eye, and ears. And if you look at each of these, you'll see that the ears now have the audio listener. The eye now has the flare layer. And the head has the GUI layer. So that's been all moved around. So if you were using that stuff before and wondering where it went, that's what happened. You'll also notice that this object, the origin, or the, sorry, the head one has its own camera. And uh, this camera is the one that's used to render the companion window on the primary monitor. So it's also the object that's returned by camera.main. So if you have a script where you called camera.main somewhere, this is the object that's going to be returned. You can see that right here. It's a tagged camera.main, whereas the origin is untagged, okay? The origin represents your tracking volume. You can kind of see these bounds here, but, but really the, the origin is about tracking the play volume that you've calibrated. The head is about tracking the head motion, right? So if you put something on the head as a child, it's going to fall around the head. Okay, so that's a good, important distinction to know. Okay, so actually that's all you need to do to play. But the other thing I'll show you right now is if you go to the head where that script lives, or sorry, it's on the eye, and uh, click collapse. So we had expand before, and now you click collapse, and then you'll see all that stuff disappears, and you get back your main camera, but you still have those two components there. And then again, expand, it'll go back to where I just was. So you have the four components, everything is there. So that's how you can revert if you uh, didn't want to make that change or for some reason you want to collapse those elements, you can just click on the collapse button. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video here and click play and have a look around and then come on back. And next we'll add the controllers to the game. Okay, so you had a chance to look around and you, uh, you got to see the ball and everything in the scene. And next up, of course, you wanna, you wanna add some interaction in that, so you wanna add those controllers. You see on the Steam camera rig, we have the controller models there. So that's what we're gonna do next, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create an empty game object on the origin. So just come up here to game object and then create an empty. And uh, actually we can create a child here, create an empty child. And that's gonna be, that child is gonna be underneath the game Cam, uh, the main camera origin. And what we want to do is rename that one left controller. And then the next thing we want to do is add a component on it. And the one we want is the Steam 
VR tracked object. So see here, there's a tracked controller, but what we actually want is the tracked object. Okay. So make sure that you have that selected. And then under index, just put none. And then we want another empty game object. So again, go to game object here and create another child. And we're going to call that the model. And this is going to represent the rendering mesh that we, uh, that is going to be created by the script. So, and the script you want is then called steam VR render model. Steam VR render model, that one right there. And all you got to do here is uh, you want the shader to be the standard shader. So click on the selector here and look for the standard shader. I'll just make this smaller for you. There it is. Standard shader. So select that. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll duplicate this whole setup because we want one for the, the right controller. And you could just go to edit to duplicate or you could press control D. And then we've got left controller one. So let's just move that up here. And then we're gonna rename that one right controller. Okay. Again, it's index none here. And we've got a model that's the Steam VR render model. And the last thing we have to do to get the controller to work is on our origin. So on this game object here, the main camera origin, we have to add a Steam VR controller manager. So let's look for that Steam, Steam VR controller manager. Okay. And here it takes the transform of both of those controllers. So go over here, drag your left controller to the slot for the left in the, in the inspector. And then same thing here, drag, click and drag your right one over to the right. So you've got your left and right controllers set up. Okay. So with that done, you should be able to press play and do a little happy dance with your new controllers. Make sure that you're running steam VR. So here you can see a, my controllers have gone to sleep. So I'm going to turn those back on. Now they've gone green. Okay. They're tracking. Let's hit play. And it should be on the, de on the desk here. There we go. Okay. So there you, now you've got your controllers rendering in your scene. So do a happy dance with your controllers, pause the video and give it a play. Have a little, uh, have a little fun there and then uh, come on back. All right. Did you do the dance? Was it happy? Good. All right. So if you did a sad dance or no dance, then uh, comment below the video or uh, have a look in the Steam VR hardware developer forum I showed you in an earlier video, and we'll try to get you uh, get you going over there. So next up, we want to finish our Steam VR camera rig. That's going to make it pretty much the same as that prefab we saw earlier, and this part's uh, pretty uh, in depth. So there's a, a bunch of stuff that we have to we can explore there. What you want to do is select your main camera origin and the script that we're going to add is the uh, steam VR play area, steam VR play area. And now you can see that there's this tracking volume that's appeared. We had that before with our prefab. I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to save my scene here. So I would highly recommend now playing with this. playing with this part. So I had some instability here, like it's still early days, right? This, uh, if you're watching this before April, before the official launch, then uh, there's some, some things that are still seemingly a bit unstable. So save often when you, before you hit play or when you change some of these settings, it seems to be a little bit unstable sometimes. So probably that'll be worked out by the time that everything goes uh, to production in April. And uh, what I wanna show you is that this play area script is the one that you as a developer can use to sort of get an idea of what uh, the, the play area is going to be like for your, uh, for your consumers, for your users. Um, and we'll go through each of these sections a little bit here. So the first one to notice is the border thickness and that's 0.15 is the default. That's 15 centimeters because uh, everything in Unity 
is you know scaled to one meter by default. So one unity unit is one meter. And so here that that border thickness refers to this area right here, this gradient. So that's 15 centimeters wide in uh, in my view here. You can control the color of that here in the color picker. If you want to change that, that's fine. The next step is the wireframe height, and that's two meters. So that's this box here that you see, and that gives you the outline of the play area that you're expecting your player to be in. You can change that depending on what you want to see. Two meters is a pretty pretty solid one. Maybe maybe you want to be at higher to show like if you want something on the ceiling or something, but uh, probably two meters is fine. Then you have these two booleans here that you can toggle, and the draw wireframe when uh, I think it's draw wireframe when selected only is this one right, and that means that it's only going to draw that wireframe in the scene view when you have that camera selected. So if I select it then it disappears when I select another object in the scene. So if you want to get it out of your way, that's what you do when, you're, when you don't have the camera selected. Draw in-game, this Boolean right here, refers just to this area around the play area. So if you turn that one off, then you're not going to see this, uh, this cyan-colored border when in, the, in the game view when you play. You might want to leave that on when you're really placing objects and you want a good idea of where they might be and this the border region gives you an idea of you know kind of a, a fudge factor zone or something like that where you want to you know you have some object that might be in some play areas okay you know you want to just say okay can someone still reach it if they have this minimum size of play area and then next up you want to look at size and that's right here and size is the size of this wireframe bounding box and that'll help you get an idea of what uh, the play area in your game uh, in your player's um, uh, living room might look like. So you have size calibrated. That's the one that's calibrated to your personal like room size. And then you have a bunch of defaults here. So 100, you know, 200 by 150 is this much smaller area. 300, uh, 300 by 225, that's of course in centimeters. So that's a fairly big one. And calibrated is the one that it should be reading from your, your Steam VR room setup settings. I had some issues sometimes it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't change to my calibrated one but I think the minimum that Vive is recommending is this 200 by 150 so that's a pretty safe one for you to play with for your games that you have at least this 200 by 150 and then you could probably um, well what you could do is then you know maybe you could script your uh, scaling factor or something like that that's something that everyone's experimenting right now is how do you if someone has a larger volume then of course they would like to use that so you have to think about that kind of thing in your game design but you can use these guidelines to kind of help you get an idea of where objects will be when your player is actually in that scene. Okay, so, and when you hit play, you're going to see, you're always going to see your bounding box of your calibrated area. So even if you have, you know, 200 by 150, currently when you hit play, you're still going to see your calibrated space. So even if you had this selected here, when you hit play, it's going to show you the, uh, the calibrated space. So uh, just be aware of that too, if, if you're wondering why things have changed from what you've selected in here. This is just kind of a preview, right? You're not gonna see that when you hit play at this point. So yeah, you go ahead and play with those settings. Save often, you know, uh, just in case it's not stable. And then what you wanna do is just get a feel for how you can map out your scenes. So you, you need to be thinking now, you know, it's a new way of designing things. You need to be thinking of how you arrange things within volumes that are not necessarily consistent. Everyone's going to have a slightly different play area, and that's going to add a lot of design challenges, but also a lot of possibilities. In the next video, we're going to look at the Vive support for seated experiences. We're just going to have a quick look at that, and then we're going to move on to making that uh, ball move around using the hand controllers. Click on the link on the right to watch the next lesson from the Vive Developer Mini Course, or click on the link on the left to enroll in the full course for free at VR Dev School. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to get more virtual reality developer videos from VR Dev School.